us a couple minutes, letting a few of the stragglers get in. So we'll be right back. All right, I think we got quorum. So howdy and welcome. My name is Trent Whitfeld. I'm with Technology, Chief of Engineering. I've been here for about seven years and um, just like you to wel welcome you to the session with uh, Zerto, Morpheus and Technology. And we're gonna talk today about some multi-cloud provisioning and protection. Um, before I get into it, I just wanna thank you guys for spending the next 45 minutes to an hour with us. I know uh, time is precious and so we appreciate uh, you taking the time to hang out with us, especially during this trying time. We have some great speakers lined up for you today. Uh, Mr. Ryan Hooley, Director of Cloud and Automation with Technologent. Uh, Mr. Dan Moret, a Senior Sales Engineer from Zerto. And Mr. Brad Parks, VP of Business Development with Morpheus Data. So before we get into it, let's talk a little about the fun stuff. So at the end of this webinar, um, a survey will pop up and give you the opportunity to pick your source of your $25 gift certificate to either Grubhub, Uber Eats, or DoorDash. And the completion of your survey, you'll also be entered into uh, uh, the chances of winning a, a Yeti cooler. So let's talk some 2020 predictions um, and beyond with uh, some stats and quotes from Gartner. Um, everybody loves a little bit of Gartner, right? So as you all read through these, these quotes and stats, one of the big questions I normally get when we talk through this is, how do the current events, this current pandemic that we're going through, how does it impact these timelines and, uh, or impact these stats? And, and really, I don't think the stats so much are impacted. Um, so I still think that, you know, 75% of mid-sized organizations, mid or large organizations, um, you know, will have adopted a multi-cloud strategy or hybrid IT strategy by 2021, things like that. I think those numbers hold true, the things in bold, the cost being double and, and um, twice as long, things like that. But I think the timelines will slip a little bit. So if we, if we look at these stats and these quotes and we think about them from a multi-cloud automation orchestration protection viewpoint, let's put them through that lens, then we can really summarize them into these categories or these business drivers or these business challenges, however you wanna phrase it, right? So looking at these business drivers, what strategies can we discuss and put in front of, in front of them um, to ensure that success? So such things as reducing costs through right-sizing, ensuring the proper applications removed or containerized, um, improving delivery times by using DevOps to instantly provision new apps when, where, and how. <clears throat> um, di disruption protection. So disaster recovery, business, con business continuity, um, even ransomware protection, right? Let's let's ensure that that always on protection is there. <clears throat> um, when it comes to cloud adoption and workload mobility, let's leverage the efficiencies of cloud to support the business. Um, freedom to move the workloads, regardless of the underlying infrastructure. The flexibility is in you know cloud to cloud migrations or, or consolidations, things like that. Um, when it comes to shadow IT, let's let's talk about governance. Let's talk about security. Let's talk about inputting regulations into the mix to ensure that some of our employees don't autom don't you know accidentally or purposefully open up a security loophole, right? So I'm actually kind of curious what you all's multi-cloud challenge is. So let's do a quick poll. I'll fire this up for you in a second. So I'll give you all couple minutes to answer that or a couple seconds to answer that and 
And while you're doing that, I'm going to sip of water. You got to love pollen. It's awesome. All right. Let's okay. go ahead and close this. Let's see these results. So, you know, is, is pretty much not too much in a surprise here, right? A lot of the times, you know, security is obviously huge. Um, reducing costs, especially nowadays, is huge. Um, cloud adoption, those are some very interesting strategic conversations we have around that with our customers. So thank you for sharing that. Now, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, uh, Mr. Ryan Hooley, the Cloud and Automation Director for Technology. Um, Ryan's going to talk to us about the importance of cloud governance um, through his cloud framework, his cloud framework discussion. So, uh, Ryan, thank you for being with us here today. You bet. Thank you, Trent. Um, for those of you playing webinar bingo, I do have two dogs and obviously a family here, and I guarantee uh, Amazon will be ringing the doorbell here shortly. So, I apologize for that. Uh, if you do get bingo, go ahead and uh, put that in your comments or something like that so we can pay you later. But uh, again, I am Ryan Hooley, Director of Cloud and Automation here at Technologen. I've uh, been here for a few years, uh, come from the customer side, doing some various things in healthcare and uh, the retail segment. So really, if you look at our framework here, Trent, if you want to go ahead and click on to that next. Um, go ahead and hit that next one. So really, our main focus uh, when we do start targeting cloud with customers is really to build a holistic uh, model that helps you achieve the success when moving or optimizing your cloud. So uh, to do this, we start off with uh, discussing cloud governance and making sure that your organization has a cloud strategy. If nothing else is learned today, uh, it really needs to be around ensuring that uh, you spend time with your business partners to ensure that all issues, concerns that you have with your on-premise world are not actually exacerbated when you move into the cloud. And of course, we're here to help uh, march you through that uh, as a team. So what is cloud governance? Cloud governance is really the alignment of people, process, technology, and knowledge to the infrastructure, security, and operations. So cloud strategy helps define the mission uh, and the target operating model uh, of what that business strategy looks like. The cloud strategy will inevitably, inevitably morph into a uh, cloud maturation cycle uh, where you will continuously compare uh, the technology that you find in a cloud and help understand those gaps and optimizations. Uh, the cloud strategy really helps answer the, the whys and the hows around how you're going to control and why you're actually going to the cloud, which is why I spend quite a bit of time on this particular effort. So part of that cloud strategy, uh, some of the things we come in and help uh, work through or those business relationship management, the governance and objectives uh, through that communication with those other teams and leadership teams, strategy around the operating model, organization and competence development, uh, enterprise architecture, security, risk management, quality assurance. And then of course, the big one here is uh, financial planning and control. You'll hear me talk quite a bit about finances uh, once you get into the, the cloud and Quite honestly, we do quite a bit of effort there with customers. Uh, end of the day, really the cloud strategy is probably the most important thing uh, as part of this framework that as you're moving to the cloud, if it's neglected, uh, you will see some uh, issues of becoming messy and really costly within the cloud if that's not part of your foresight planning. So next you see here is our define phase. At a technical level, this is really the, the phase that starts assessing the environment, mapping resources, uh, putting things together based on their dependencies. The definition stage really leans back heavily on that strategy and governance, again, to determine what the, the cloud should be for all groups and uh, resources that are going to actually make it to the cloud. So next is our secure, uh, which we call, or really the cybersecurity. Uh, we have a cybersecurity uh, is paramount in everything that we do within the cloud. Uh, we have a cybersecurity uh, first mentality and everything we do is with security in mind. We achieve this through a defense in depth methodology and that really helps look at your end-to-end -end infrastructure and application designs to ensure that you're secured. Next here we have uh, architecture. You'll notice that this is fourth and not first in this framework. 
and which is designed so to ensure that we answer the why, what, and how questions before we even try to buy those puzzle pieces. So we follow this, uh, we follow a, a similar well-architected framework, uh, if you're familiar with that, uh, for all clouds, and it really emphasizes architecting solutions with cost in mind. Again, you'll see that last pillar there is that cost optimization. Very, very important that we hit this in our architecture and everything that we do. Uh, really, as this is probably the number one reasons for customers uh, getting into trouble within the cloud and, you know, really starting to engage, uh, hey, we lifted and shifted, now need some help uh, figuring out what, uh, why these costs are where they're at. Next comes into play the automate or automation. Uh, you shouldn't move to the cloud without a significant culture shift. Automation must be forefront on your minds and really leads to the most significant way to consume and manage cloud, uh, including the cost. Uh, one thing we note is that uh, your cloud infrastructure is not a pet, so you need to treat it as such. This gets into our cattle versus pets conversation. Infrastructure uh, teams really need to understand the CICD, uh, what CICD means, and that DevOps and SRE methodologies do actually include the infrastructure teams and allow your teams to start governing how the cloud is consumed and really taking back control that you may lose when going to the cloud. Uh, next in here is uh, deploy. Deployment phases here focus on the consumption of your infrastructure by business partners. So helping you develop your catalogs and opportunities for these developers and teams to really easily interact with your systems, uh, along with ensuring your showback, your chargeback methodologies are tracked, uh, including the full life cycle of those uh, cloud systems. Uh, lastly in here, we talk about uh, analyze. So really around the measure, monitor, improve, uh, we perform gap analysis between performance requirements and current state, review cost optimization. Again, there's that cost word, uh, really how that functions along with uh, leading to automation factors. Uh, we track and understand the cost again, uh, review KPIs uh, defined around those business and out output goals. Again, back to that target operating model, ensuring that these all come together. And really it is crucial to ensure that uh, your monitor analyzing your current state as this helps get into a continual maturity model, uh, hence the cyclical nature of this framework itself. So this framework really helps us uh, engage uh, with you at any level within your cloud journey, wherever you're at in this cycle, we can come in and help. This also helps bring in tool sets like Morpheus and Zerto that really are able to uh, engage these in these early stages around the governance, uh, architecture, automation, how do we move things, how do we manage things, uh, really help get customers up and running with this governance and CICD very, very quickly. So at a high level, that's uh, how we bring this on and uh, send it back to you, Trent. Awesome, thanks, Ryan. Well, uh, you, didn't, you didn't hit the bingo, right? So, sorry guys. Um, no, thanks for the time, Ryan, that's, it's, the framework, as Ryan mentioned, is pretty much key in terms of bringing in our best of breed partners and having those conversations. So with that, I'd actually uh, like to introduce Brad Parks from Morpheus Data. Um, he's going to talk a little bit with us about the automation orchestration or automation orchestration and how that fits into your environment. So Brad, thanks for being here. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Uh, chance for bingo not over. I got two kids, a dog and a family that likes Amazon as well. So uh, we'll keep it running. Um, a couple of things uh, maybe to, to take as a, as a vine to grab, really appreciate the, the framework conversation that Ryan just ran through because it's, it's echoed very much in how we think about cloud in the, uh, in the enterprises that we're dealing with. A couple of things I caught from the poll, um, you know, cost, speed, and governance were the, the three top ones that, that I caught out of there. And if we, if we go to the next slide, I think one of the one of the layers as we peel back the onion that contributes probably to those three being one of the major concerns is just the level of technical debt that we see when we're out dealing with large enterprises that are trying to manage both on-premises infrastructure as well as public cloud infrastructure. At the same time, they're trying to modernize from you know, bare metal applications to virtualized applications to thinking about containers to taking advantage of some of the public cloud PaaS services. All of that together has created uh, so much inertia and I'm sure you guys are seeing it as well. The outcomes of that um, one is cost. Um, when you think about adoption of public cloud, um, particularly in a 
uh, in its early days, you had a lot of different teams going out, swiping their credit card, using public cloud, while at the same time, you have on-premises infrastructure that's underutilized, all of that leading to uh, significant cost overruns. In terms of agility, one of the problems that we see is not just the sheer number of tools, but the manual handoffs that it takes to fully deliver an application service once it's requested. I mean, it can still take you know weeks oftentimes for, for IT to deliver on a service. That's why the public cloud certainly is so, uh, so widely adopted now because they hide a lot of that complexity and they automate it for you. But how can you get that same level of speed from your on-premises environment? And then lastly, governance. When you do have different teams, each holding a, a piece of this elephant, governance becomes critically important. So that's the kind of the problem domain as you're trying to move in maturity from rehosting your apps to replatforming to ultimately rebuilding. That's the problem domain that, uh, that we're focused on in Morpheus. If you go to the next slide, um, a little bit about kind of where we got our start. We uh, were actually created um, as a self-service engine for a group of internal DevOps engineers who are having to go modernize application stacks at dozens of companies within a large private equity firm. So we didn't, we didn't start life trying to be a, a tool, right, that we were going to go sell to enterprises. It was built by practitioners to solve a lot of the problems that I just ran through, which has given us a pretty interesting perspective on this space. Uh, one of the things Ryan hit on was that you know, people and process is often, you know, as if not more important than tools and technology. And when we're dealing with large enterprises, we see three different constituencies all trying to consume infrastructure and, and, and run their applications. First is the traditional IT or ops function. Um, this is the group that's looking to, to turn on-prem into an AWS-like experience and at the same time kind of manage the guardrails around public cloud. At the same time, we've got app dev groups that have spun up in just about every industry who are being measured on, on innovation, on deploying new value into the business. And then lastly, the business itself is trying to, to consolidate reporting, manage costs, and make sure everyone's in compliance. If you're not able to give each of those three user groups what they need out of hybrid cloud and hybrid IT, then, uh, then you're still gonna be wanting. So if we go to the next slide, self-service really is at the core of what we aim to deliver to those three constituencies. And when we peel back the onion, there are you know, four key areas from a function perspective that Morpheus looks at when we deliver on self-service. And whether you, you know, end up picking Morpheus or you, know, you pick another set of tools, um, these are four things that you're gonna have to think about as well as you tackle multi-cloud and hybrid. First is actually integrating and optimizing your existing environment. Uh, very few of us have the luxury of, of a, a net greenfield environment. Uh, for most of you, you've got you know, on-prem vSphere, you may have some hyper-converged, you've got a couple public clouds. How do you quickly tie all of that together and provide some right sizing? So that's a core part of our platform is dealing very well with brownfields, including ingesting all of your application services and providing you some guidance and analytics to help you reduce some of your cloud costs. But if we go next, one of the reasons cost is an issue for most customers who are struggling with that complexity is they haven't had a, an approach to governance and role-based access that spans the full spectrum of clouds. And so a big part of our framework is setting up very fine-grained role-based access, multi-tenancy policies around memory, CPU, budget, all the things that you need to, to keep guardrails in place. So analytics gets your house in order, governance keeps it from being a problem. But if you go to the next build, the groups that you're oftentimes trying to govern are application developers. And if you're not able to treat them as first class citizens and give them the tools that they need to enable continuous delivery, to provision infrastructure stacks, programmatically as code and tie into their delivery pipelines, um, you're gonna fall short. So that's a third key pillar of our platform. Uh, we are able to automate application provisioning into bare metal environments, VMware, hyperconverged, Kubernetes, all the way up into the public cloud stacks. And then lastly, but not least, once your application's up and running, 
it's not over. Day two is where a lot of the operational complexity comes in. So we also have tied in self-service to things like scaling rules, monitoring, logging, backup, and more. So it's a systematic approach to multi-cloud. Go to the next slide. One layer down, um, we've actually built out a set of capabilities natively for just about every phase of the continuous automation lifecycle. So from triggering an event to tying into your identity management to DNS to config management on around this wheel, we actually ship out of the box with our own native capability. But what that's given us is not, you know, not a desire to go replace every tool that you have. It has given us hooks that we can then build out to tie into most of the tools that are already out there. So we have about 80 native integrations built into the platform so we can get up and running very, very quickly. Typically, we can go from install to having a functioning proof of concept for a private cloud in less than an hour because we simply point at your API endpoints, enter in some credentials, and we can knit all of this together. And that's what we see as one of the big problems for our customers is not a lack of tools, it's that you probably have a whole bunch of tools that don't eloquently talk to each other in an organized way. So think about this as how you're probably trying to stand up apps. If you go to the next slide, the other dimension is where are those applications being deployed into? Where are they gonna live? Um, and it is much more complicated than it was you know, five or 10 years ago. Um, Morpheus has probably the broadest set of cloud support um, in this space. So whether you're looking across your application library as a whole, for traditional apps or you're building out new apps and wanting to take advantage of uh, public cloud services, uh, we're able to manifest all of that into a single self-service catalog that abstracts a lot of the complexity. Um, and that complexity is one of the things we see teams struggling with is just the skills gap on how do you train up around all of these different cloud endpoints that are being thrown your way. With Morpheus in place, you can still take advantage of the best in class capabilities from each of these, but only have to automate and learn one set of tools. So that's the that's the quick flyby. I want to hand it back to uh, back to Trent. But if you um, if you want to learn a little bit more, we do have a, a follow up uh, webinar scheduled for tomorrow. We're actually going to do a little show and tell and a demo, and certainly the technology team can uh, can get you spun up pretty quick. Awesome. Well, thank you, Brad. Um, so let's uh, let's take another poll. Give me two seconds to get this fired up. And uh, while this is going on, um, something I forgot to mention. My apologies. Was uh, we'll have a Q and A session at the end. So make sure that uh, you guys get those questions in on the on the, the right hand pane, a little pop up that comes in, and we'll answer as many as we can at the end of the session. Uh, I'll give a few more seconds. We've got a couple of people voting still. All right, let's close this up. Share the results. So pretty much as we would expect, what cloud is your company involved with? So when a multi-cloud strategy, a lot of the times we see the big players is your AWS. Um, I think it's, it's not too bad. Let's get that hidden and keep on going. Um, so Brad, thanks again. Uh, appreciate the time there. Uh, you know, let's, let's continue talking with some of our best of breed partners. And um, I'd like to, introduce Dan Moret, who by far has the coolest picture I've ever seen from an intro standpoint. So uh, that's a whole nother story that it's probably an after five o'clock story we can have with a beer, but I'd love to hear a little more about that picture. Um, but Dan's gonna talk to us a little bit from the Zerto perspective and you'll see why it's such a huge piece of, of our technology cloud framework. So Dan, I appreciate you being here. Hey, thanks Trent, appreciate it. Um, yeah, we can definitely uh, tee up that story for after five o'clock sometime. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right into it. So Zerto as a, as a whole is really just a is a disaster recovery platform. So it's it's more than just a backup tool. It's more than a replication tool. It's kind of all those things combined plus more. 
So if we look at kind of where we typically fit and the things we kind of solve for help address, it's the the unplanned and the planned outages. You can call them the good, the bad, and uh, you know, probably some of them are are ugly as well. Um, but it's the the unplanned is your disaster recovery event. So your infrastructure failures, your your you know water main breaks, uh, that sort of thing. Natural disasters, ransomware, you can kind of throw in a in, into that bucket as well. And you have things like you know operational recovery, so that's your user errors, uh, corruption from power events, that sort of thing. And then if you jump over to to more of the the plan side of the the house, you have the things like the infrastructure modernization, the you know replacing your your storage arrays, uh, upgrading to the you know a different vendor, that sort of thing. Uh, migrations, consolidation. So as your your data centers move, maybe it's uh, on prem, maybe it's on prem to you know any of the clouds. Um, AWS, Azure, et cetera, or uh, an MSP, you know, a, a private cloud or, you know, your tier points and islands. Regardless of what those are, it, it's really about being prepared to address those things. So uh, if we go into the next slide, uh, Trent, Here's kind of the the things that we uh, we address in in that in that market. There's really four different things. It's really it's it's best to breed hypervisor based replication. So we're uh, agentless. So there's no agents to install. Uh, we basically tie into the hypervisor level. So that gives you a, a very quick uh, replication point. Uh, the second thing is a unique journaling technology. So we're not leveraging snapshots so you don't have the the inherent uh, data flow disruptions uh, that snapshots can create so it's a it's a journal based technology that really allows you to recover uh, entire applications uh, not just VMs not just files but entire applications or sites back to the, the, the nearest second to when the, uh, the event happened Application consistency it's, is, is really kind of where we, we like to focus. So it's not just protecting files, it's not a VM, and it's not VMs at random point in times. It's, it's wrapping those VMs uh, into an application, protecting that as a single entity from seconds ago to years ago, allows you to recover that much easier, faster, and with uh, that much less effort. And simplicity at scale. Everything we do is is made with simplicity uh, in mind. So it, from ease of use, uh, ease of deployment, uh, some of the built-in orchestration analytics that we have uh, in place, and then it's really our ability to integrate with tools like Morpheus uh, with the help of you know uh, great uh, partners like Technologent that can really tie it all together and give you really the, the big red easy button uh, when it comes time for, for DR and protecting your environment. All right, go into the next slide, please, Trent. So full visibility with uh, analytics control and reporting, this kind of ties in a lot to kind of the, the discussion that we've had around uh, cloud migrations, planning, cost, all that good stuff. So as part of the, the Zerto platform, you have uh, access to analytics um, that we have as a as a SaaS offering. That basically gives you a great planning tool as far as say you're wanting to move to Azure um, from an on-prem VMware environment. You can really uh, use our analytics to get a good sizing uh, cost estimate of of you know how much storage is going to be utilized, how much uh, bandwidth you're going to need to be able to either replicate or protect your applications to Azure, um, that sort of thing is, is all built into the analytics. Uh, the other thing this kind of talks about is is the uh, the reporting. Uh, so anytime you do a failover or a non-disruptive test failover with Zerto, we generate these uh, nice little PDF reports. So anybody that has uh, regulatory requirements to to prove that you're able to recover, you know, any of these, uh, you know, uh, compliance uh, regulations here at the bottom, uh, we can help you uh, with that collateral uh, by giving you a, a, you know, a PDF that you can sign off on the, and give to those auditors. All right, Trent, let's go to the last slide. Yeah, so why Zerto? Uh, the, the, the reason is really kind of a threefold. So it's really protection against any disruption. So it's the planned, the unplanned, and basically to deliver that always on customer experience. Uh, operational efficiencies is really just about, uh, you know, whether you're solving for a DR, operational recovery, long-term retention, uh, multi-cloud, you know, strategies, uh, operational services, 
any of those things, it really just makes it uh, that much easier, faster to, to respond to those type of events. And then multi-cloud agility. So it's the ability to move workloads, uh, basically VMs, from uh, to, from, and between private and public clouds. So we've got the ability to move workloads from AWS to Azure to on-prem, back and forth, basically as your your demands and, change, uh, and uh, requirements change based on cost or other business drivers. So with that, I'll toss it back over to Trent, and we will uh, continue on. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. All right. Well, let's take uh, another poll in related to, you know, what's your biggest challenge with multi-cloud data protection? Let's get that fired up for everybody. And give some folks a little bit of time to answer this. I see some good questions already popping in, gents, which is awesome. I'll give it a few more seconds and uh, pretty much what I expected the answer to be. Go ahead and publish these results for everyone. Not surprising, all of the above is the biggest challenge, right? Just as Dan pretty much referenced throughout his presentation. Um, but yeah, that's, appreciate the time with that, Dan. And let me get this back over here so y'all don't see my emails popping up. So we've heard from Brad and talk about the, the Morpheus side where the, the importance of the self-service and the unified orchestration model. Um, we've heard from Dan where, you know, where the importance of workload mobility and, and, and agility, and uh, that adoption aspect. And, you know, Ryan come through with the, the cloud framework and how governance fits into all of that. So, the bottom line is when you have conversations around this is really what is the strategy to get from point A to point B? What and that follow up with that is what is preventing you from achieving those goals? Um, I absolutely love this quote. I actually stole it from one of Ryan's presentations, but it, it fits pretty much perfectly. So if you don't have a plan or you don't have a strategy and you're just doing a lift and shift or something like that with a multi-cloud aspect, you're really just wishing for success, right? So transitions and change that can be uncomfortable. And so that's where, you know, technology comes into place. And that's why we bring in these best of breed partners where we have that ability to help you guys with that comfort. So comfort the uncomfortable. Now, some of those inhibitors, some of those things that, might, that get in the way might be some of these different puzzle pieces, right? So, you know, I ask you what puzzle pieces preventing you from achieving your goal. At Technology, each and every one of these pieces and more, we have the technical expertise behind it. We have practices built to make sure that we have the SMEs to put in front of you. With an architect to sales rep ratio of three to one, we can provide you plenty of smart guys to make sure that we're making you comfort and able to tame that chaos that we normally see. Now, today we focused on two pieces from a data protection and an automation standpoint. But really with Zerto and Morpheus, these two players fit far more into many different pieces. Right, so we're not pigeonholing them into these just these two protection areas, so those just these two puzzle areas. So if we think about that, and if you envision a goal of what you're trying to achieve, much like a puzzle, if you don't have the inside pieces complete, the more difficult pieces, right, your puzzle is not complete. So this is the reason why we we come in and we partner with Zerto and Morpheus and those other best of breed partners. You couple them with the technology framework, and you're able to come and populate the rest of those pieces. And you can see where these different conversations take. You can see where else they go, right? And so we can absolutely, working all together, help you achieve your goals and make sense of the chaos that can be a cloud initiative. So what's next? I fully invite every one of you to have a deeper dive related to the framework. And as Ryan mentioned earlier, it doesn't matter where you are in this process, right? You can be all the way at the deployment aspect, and if you work with our, talk with our cloud guys like in our automation teams, I can assure you that they can get you a little more efficient and get that cost saving aspect of what we talked about earlier, what basically you saw on all those uh, polls we took. So the framework basically introduces all these different aspects you see on that right hand side. 
So from cloud migrations to cloud infrastructure discussions um, through the cloud connectivity and obviously DevOps and automation. So the, the goal is essentially to get you to the point where we're helping you define what panacea is for your environment. Now, some of the folks you can, you can meet with at a deeper level across the, across the technology and country. Ryan Hooley, who you met today, our Cloud and Automation Director, he covers the East United States for us. Jason Ray is the CTO of South Texas. He covers South and Northeast United States for us. Greg Spencer, CTO of the Rockies, he covers North, North Central United States for us. And Justin Zimmer, our service automation lead who covers the West side of the United States. You can get with these guys to talk, to talk about demos, deep dives, get a POC schedule, cloud assessments, and obviously that deep dive discussion on the cloud framework. Um, to make it easy on you, I'll provide my email address. I'm Trent at technology.com. So I'm happy to go and navigate and help you quarterback in terms of who you should talk to. If you have a specific question or a specific follow-up question, I'm happy to field that and get those to the right people. My last name's an atrocity, so it's pretty easy to get a hold of me. It's just my first name at technology.com. So quick reminder before we send it off to the Q&A, open up a Q&A. <clears throat> Don't forget that at the, at the end of the session, the survey will pop up. You'll be able to choose your Grubhub, Uber Eats, or DoorDash $25 certificate and fill out that survey, and we'll get you uh, into that drawing for that, that Yeti cooler. We value your opinion, so um, really appreciate the, any information you can provide. So with that, let's check out some of the questions we have on here. Let's see. Ryan, I got one for you. See if he's still here. Sorry, was that to me, Trent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a quick question for you. Um, you know, you had mentioned, uh, you know, any any stage in, in any stage in the framework, um, it's in a good engagement model. No, no worries if you're so late in the game. I just want to see if you can emphasize that or exact or you know extend on that a little bit. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, again, it depends on the company where you're at with your methodology. Uh, we've we've had a lot of customers come in that have already lifted and shifted to the cloud, um, you know, had a ultimate goal from C levels saying, hey, let's get everything into the cloud. We moved it up here. Uh, and now we're getting, you know, monstrous bills or how do we go about uh, uh, automating what we have up here, meaning how do we put lifecycle management into the, the entire place? Uh, we are able to come in and help you through that. Or maybe you're just looking for that CI CD platform, meaning at a developer level, or even from a uh, infrastructure team, uh, meaning your your architects and your you know true sysadmins that that may be dabbling in scripting, uh, may not completely understand Ansible or are wanting to enhance their capabilities within there. So uh, anywhere along that stage where we've got the expertise uh, to come in there and help you define what you have, and maybe even go back and look at those. Uh, the things like I mentioned from a cloud strategy perspective and saying, here's the way we would approach this. Maybe you're missing some of these pieces within here and we can help fill in uh, what may be missing or where you're wanting to go with that strategy. So to your question is that's exactly why we built it that way so that we can come in, help you engage wherever that may be necessary and not saying you must fill into fit into this uh, particular square. Uh, before we can help, it's it's uh, where can we help you and help you enhance your your companies and business strategies. Perfect, thank you, Ryan. Well, it looks like you guys were overachievers as well and answered the bulk of these questions. Went off as they came in through the chat. Um, Brad or Dan, do you see any questions that uh, you want to open it up to yeah, or uh, something you've seen before? Yeah, there's one I didn't uh, didn't quite hit on the on the Morpheus side that does come up in a lot of these um, is around uh, containers specifically. It's something that um, is interesting when we you know when we started building this platform years ago, um, we were doing it on the back of you know, Linux containers, and that's what our development team was using for their own use. But you know, five years ago, when we got out into market, containers were nascent and and not many people are using them. Fast forward to today, and it, it's coming up more and more. So one of the things we have brought into the platform over the last six months or so is our own embedded Kubernetes stack. So you can actually deploy a 
you know, full Morpheus Kubernetes service directly from the tool, stand that up on any of our clouds, or you can use Morpheus to spin up EKS and AKS public cloud Kubernetes. And one of the things we just added in the 4.2 release was the ability to attach to existing brownfield Kubernetes deployments. So if you're trying to kind of stop the monster before it gets big, you know, now's the time to probably bring some of those newer Kubernetes deployments into the fold. So they also get the same governance and everything else you're trying to get from your, from your VMware and public clouds. So. Awesome. Thank you, Brad. Dan, how about you? You see anything in there that we didn't already call out? Nothing in the questions. Uh, just like to kind of echo your offer. I mean, happy to do demos or deeper dives, get into you know some of the more intricate use cases and and technology, and kind of show how that works. So, you know, uh, anybody that wants to reach out to you, um, definitely uh, filter my way, and happy to have those conversations. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Like I said, my last name is so bad they gave me an alias. So just trying to technology. So happy to happy to point everyone in the right direction and um, help get that going. So I guess with that, you know, we I just want to again thank you all for for joining us. And uh, in a second, we'll open it up to get all get the fun stuff going. Um, I know in it in it's an interesting time right now, right? With uh, this pandemic going on, we're, we're finding layoffs and, and furloughs and project delays and things like that. But just know that the technology family, the Zerto family, the Morpheus family, all of our best of breed um, partners within these situations are, are here for you. And we'd love to help you have that strategic conversation to provide that cost relief, that, you know, that particular delivery timeline reduction, things like that. So all those challenges that we talked about earlier, um, we're here for you to combat those. So again, I thank you all. and. Uh, Hopefully see you all soon. God bless.